the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Donald Novis, Bill Thompson, the Paul Taylor Choristers, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Who? Has it ever occurred to you that when you're in the kitchen, most of the time you're on your feet? That's one of the reasons why the kitchen floor is often a problem floor. It gets more than average wear. And besides, you just can't help spilling things now and then. Millions of women have discovered the easy way to solve the problem of their kitchen floors with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. When you apply glow coat to a linoleum floor, you do two things. Number one, you protect the surface of the linoleum. Keep its colors bright and fresh and make it wear indefinitely. Number two, you save work because it's so easy to keep a glow-coated floor clean and spotless. Spilled things are quickly wiped up with a damp cloth. And, of course, there's no rubbing or buffing with glow coat. Nothing could be easier than using this famous floor polish. You simply put it on your floor, and in 20 minutes, the floor has gleaming, sparkling beauty. That's why glow coat is called self-polishing. It actually does the work itself. You can use glow coat on your painted and varnished wood floors, too. Get some from your dealer tomorrow. This, you might know, is the week of Wistful Vista's annual auto show. And, you might know, there are thousands of people attending. And two of them, you might know, Fibber McGee and Molly. Chumps, dumbbells, saps. Who? Bus. Why? Fifty-five cents. Fifty-five cents to see a bunch of new cars that next month we could see free at any stoplight. Chucks. Anyway, we don't want a new car, Molly. Well, maybe you don't, but I do, dearie. What for? What have these new cars got that our car hasn't got? It's what these new cars haven't got that appeals to me. What's that there? Running boards. Oh, yeah? Well, personally, I like running boards. Otherwise, when you go camping, where are you going to carry the beer? <laughs> well, now, just the same, I get a kick out of auto shows. No, not me. As far as I'm concerned, an auto show is just a preview of a used car lot. <laughs> ah, there. Good evening, folks. Could I show you some of the special features of the 1940 Hoot Nanny 8? Oh, it's Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Hi, Gildersleeve. You handling the Hoot Nanny 8 in Whistle Vista? Yes, I am, and a wonderful car it is, too. Uh-huh. Headlights built in the fenders, fenders, bi- fenders built in the car, car built in Detroit, Detroit built in 1701. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a glorious tradition. <laughs> Yes, isn't it, though? Oh, I don't know, Gildersleeve. Frankly, I don't like the modern trend in automobile design. Oh, you don't? Why not, McGee? Well, all I can think of is make them wider and lower every year. Why, shucks, by 1943, we'll have to drive cars laying on our stomachs like a kid on a sled. (laughs) Well, you'll have to admit, McGee, we've made some radical changes this year. Such as what, Mr. Gildersleeve? The radio aerial, for one thing. Last year, you'll remember, we had a radio aerial that looked like a buggy whip. Yes. Well, this year, we've installed a buggy whip that looks like a radio aerial. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, that's the Hoot Nanny 8, folks. Always the pioneer. Oh, yeah. Why, this year, we have sealed beam headlights, sealed in transmission, sealed in lubrication. Who's that sitting in the back seat tapping on the window? That's another new feature this year, a sealed in hitchhiker. (laughs) (laughs) Well. It's a beautiful car, Mr. Gildersleeve. I particularly like the idea of no running boards. How much does it sell for? Well, uh, let me see. Uh, this car is $850 FOB. $850, eh? Say, that ain't bad. 
What would that be delivered, Gildersleeve? Uh, let me figure a moment, McGee. $850 list. Uh-huh. And drive away charge, 10% of the federal tax, state tax, fire and theft insurance, 90 day guarantee. A carrying charge equal to 5% of the 18 month note. 6 5, carry the 2, drop the 2, import, export, special surtax. Oh, yes, yes. With the various carrying charges and taxes, McGee, it comes to just about $14,500. <laughs> Only 14500 eh? I suppose that includes a full tank of gas. Oh, yes, yes. Very good, very good. <laughs> or was it? Yeah, yeah, or was it? Well, as long as we're next-door neighbors, Gildersleeve, I don't know why I shouldn't give you the business. Oh, wonderful. Are you going to buy it, McGee? Well, I'm going to think it over. Certainly, certainly. Here, you take some literature and look it over, McGee. Fine. Oh, incidentally, may I call your attention to the streamlining, McGee? This year, we've even eliminated the door handle. Oh. Say you have, haven't you? Well. How do you open the doors? Uh, open the doors? Well, you just... Uh, uh, for goodness sake, I wonder how you do open the doors. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me while I call up the sales manager and find out. Uh... Come on, Molly. 14500 bucks is too rich for my blood. I want to go set in a dump truck for a few minutes. Well, now, I think it was mean of you to let Mr. Gildersleeve think you were going to buy it. Huh? I told him as our next-door neighbor, he ought to get the business, and that's what I was doing. What? Giving him the business. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful car. And look at this color chart. Huh? You can get a Hoot Nanny 8 in jealous green, burnt toast brown, taxi cab yellow, spank baby red, <laughs> and parlor pink. Well, you can, eh? Yeah. See, when I first started buying cars back about 1909, all you could get them in was black. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Remember that first car I owned, Molly? Let me see now. Was that the Stoddard Dayton or the Chalmers? That was the Winton. Or was it the Brush? <laughs> no, I think that was the Stanley Steamer. It was the Stanley Steamer, uh-huh. McGee. Yeah. And what a wonderful car for picnic. Yeah. Remember how we used to cook the sauerkraut and weenies on the radiator? <laughs> Those were the days. Yeah, I don't know. They weren't so hot. It was kind of tough on the farmers in them days. Why on the farmers? Well, they kept them busy all day pulling automobiles out of mud holes and all night hauling fresh water for the mud holes. (laughs) Well, hello there, Johnny. Hello, daughter. How do you like the auto show? Oh, it's very interesting, Mr. Oldtimer. The cars are certainly beautiful this year. (laughs) They're much better designed, too. Now, take visibility, for instance. Why, you can sit in some of these cars and see two years' payments ahead. (laughs) That's pretty good, Johnny, but that ain't the way I heard it. The way I heard it, one feller says to t'other feller, Say, he says, Want to buy some tickets for the Fibber McGee and Molly? What you mean, buy them, says t'other feller. I didn't know their program was that good. It ain't, says the first feller. Such a turkey, they're going to raffle it off for Thanksgiving. (laughs) Well, so long, kids. I got to see if I can trade in my car for a garbage truck. A garbage truck? Yep. This year, I'm going to give them road hogs something to get their teeth into. So long, kids.
Hey, Molly, let's go home. What are we doing at an auto show anyhow? We ain't going to buy a car anyway. Well, no, I wouldn't be too sure, dearie. We might. But why? Chuck's, we only got 300,000 miles on our car. <laughs> Just nicely broke in. Runs like a top. Yeah, and looks just as dizzy. <laughs> Besides, I just put new wicks in the headlamps. <laughs> Why, that car has had the most loving care. Why, I, I, I've treated it like a baby. I know you have, dearie. Yeah. And it's just crying to be changed. <laughs> Frankly, me, I'm ashamed to ride in that old jalopy. Why, the seats are so high, I feel like I was riding on a Ferris wheel. The neighbors think Step that... Step right we... over here, folks. The latest thing in accessories. Windshield wipers, rear view mirrors, gear shift knobs, piston rings, spark plugs, hub caps, and Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> hey, bud, what kind of a car do you use the Thousand Island dressing on? On your garden truck. Wow! <laughs> Hey, if he's selling accessories, maybe he'd be interested in my invention, Molly. What invention, dearie? That radiator ornament I designed. Hey, bud, would you be interested in buying an interest in a new kind of a radiator ornament? What kind of a radiator ornament? <laughs> well, it's a little electric pixie sitting on the radiator cap. Oh, what does it do, McGee? Well, when you go to park, there's a little wire in the fender that touches the curb when you get too close, which makes an electrical contact, and the little pixie on the radiator turns around and shakes his head at you. <laughs> You interested, bud? No, I'm sorry. Oh. Come on, Molly. Say, have you noticed, dearie, how much roomier this year's cars are? Yeah, I guess they are. Much roomier. Mm -hmm. Now, that car over there will hold three people in the front seat very comfortably. Mm, that'll be a good car for us. I can just see the three of us riding around town, real chummy-like. What do you mean, the three of us? Oh, me and you and the man from the finance company. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hey, Molly, here's a refreshment counter. Let's get a soda or something. Okay, dearie. Hey, sis, how about a little service? Oh, certainly. We're having a special tonight. We're... Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Mr. McGee. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? Hi, Uppy. Heavenly <laughs> day. What on earth are you doing working at a soda fountain? Oh, my, isn't it silly? <laughs> well, you see, the various members of our club take turns working here during the auto show. Oh. All the profits go to charity. We are raising funds to commemorate... Commemorate what, Mrs. Uppington? Uh, we haven't decided yet. <laughs> but we're taking a vote at the next meeting. Now, what could we serve you? Well, I think I'll have a chocolate soda, Mrs. Uppington, with the chocolate ice cream. Certainly, my dear. A dark victory. Make it a double feature. <laughs> and uh, you, Mr. McGee? Oh, give me a ham sandwich and a glass of water, Uppy. Uh, very well. Hollywood, cavalcade, and the rain scheme. <laughs> Well, this is the last place I expected to see you, Mrs. Uppington. Dealing him off the arm in a heartburn hut. <laughs> oh, but my dear, it is such fun, really. Uh, did you ever do this, Mr. McGee? Do what, Uppy? Did you ever work as a soda, squirt? <laughs> You're catching on too fast, Uppy. Oh, thank you so much, Miss McGee. One must learn the tricks of the trade, you know. Oh, uh, how is your sandwich, Miss McGee? Oh, not bad, but this slice of ham had a picture of John Adams on it and some glue on the back. You could use it for a two-cent stamp. <laughs> how much do I owe you, Uppy? Uh, 65 cents. Okay. <laughs> thank you. And uh, if you're through, Miss McGee, there's a gentleman waiting for your plate. Huh? Oh, oh, excuse me, bud. Oh, that's all right. Hey, sister, give me a glass of milk and a plate of shrimp. Certainly, sir. Snow White and the Seventh War. <laughs> well, I I'm sorry I'm so busy, Mr. and Mrs. McGee. Uh, do drop by later. Well, uh, goodbye. Hi. You can't tell me that's the first time Epp Uppy ever slung hash. <laughs> I'll bet it isn't either. No, sir. Ain't. You know, I always wondered why she had a picture of Fred Harvey on the piano. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go home, Molly. Oh, not yet, McGee. I want to see the rest of the cars. Now look at that nice little coupe over there. Isn't that sweet? And see, no running boards. Oh, gee whiz, Molly, no running boards. 
Oh. Now, look, Molly, that car of ours right, is perfectly... Folks, all right, get your membership blanks here. Yes, madam, just sign on the bottom line. Certainly, sir. Here are some extra blanks for your friends. Oh, hello there, Fibber. Hello, Molly. Oh. Hi, hello. Uh, what are the memberships for, Mr. Wilcox? For the Wistful Vista Careful Drivers Club. Here, make out a couple blanks. Okay, Harlow. We'll see. Hey, what is this? We hereby certify that we are regular users of Johnson's Car New. I thought this was a safety club. Well, it is. It's got a taint of commercialism, hasn't it? No taint. <laughs> no, sir. Here's how it works. Just apply Johnson's Car New over the surface of your car, let it dry to a white powder, and wipe it off with, with a soft cloth. That's all. It cleans and polishes in one easy operation. Why, do you know if Now, everybody... wait a minute, Harlow. This tie-up with safe driving sounds a little phony to me. What are you talking about? Why, you... It's a perfectly sensible connection, just as Molly said. Safe driving begins with the care of your car, doesn't it? Well, I say... Yes, it does. So I suppose you'll say, what's the looks of a car got to do with careful driving, good brakes, and good lights, eh? Well, naturally, Well, it's I... got everything to do with it. Okay, bud. <laughs> You're not going to be fussy in one department and slipshod in another, are you? I didn't say I... Why, certainly not. Mm, Me too. We don't say Johnson's car new will take dents out of your fenders, but a guy who takes pride in his car probably takes pride in his driving. Well, it's sure nice to have seen you folks. All right, everybody, get your membership blanks out here. I never thought of tying up the safe driving angle with waxing the car, did you, dearie? No, but as the guy says when he's seen the measles sign on the door, I guess they got something there. <laughs> After this, I'll be... Whoa! I'm sorry, little girl. <laughs> See, why don't you look where you're going, I bet you. All right, I apologize, didn't I? Hmm? I says I was sorry, didn't I? About what? Bumping India. Oh, that's okay, mister. It didn't hurt. Then what are you hollering about? Well, gee, I... Hmm? I says, what are you how? Oh, forget it, sis Okay, I'll try You gonna buy a car, mister? Hmm, are you? Hmm? Oh, I don't know, sis Why, are you selling them? <laughs> yes Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on, I don't believe it Why? Well, you're too little, that's why Oh, no, I'm not Oh, yes, you are Oh, no, I'm not Oh, yes, you are Oh, yes, I guess I am <laughs> Him, I bet you. Oh, stooging for the old man, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, sis, what kind of cars does your old man or does your father sell? Truck. Oh, he does, eh? Mm-hmm. Well, you're the youngest car salesman I ever saw. You do any demonstrating? Mm-hmm. I says, can you drive? Yeah, I don't know. I never tried. <laughs> Just as well, I guess. You're too young to know the rules of the road. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, Gee, let's not do that anymore. <laughs> anyway, I bet you I do know the rules, I bet you. My daddy told me what they were. Well, good for him. Mm-hmm. Did he tell you all about slowing down for curves, staying on your own side, and giving the proper signals and all stuff like that there? No. Huh? He didn't? Well, what did he tell you? He said, always take your share of the road. What? Drive fast when it rains so you get home quick. Never let the other guy know what you're going to do. Don't be afraid to go through a red light and never give a sucker an even break. (laughs) What? He did? He surely did. (laughs) Why, that's a terrible thing to tell you. That guy needs a good ball and out, and I'm just the guy to do it. Where is your old man? I want to talk to him. You can't. Nobody can. Why not? He's in the hospital with both legs busted and all his teeth knocked out. (laughs) Oh, excuse me now, mister. I got my eye on a prospect. (laughs) Folks, Donald Nova sings Good Night, My Love, assisted by the Paul Taylor Choristers and Billy Mills Orchestra.
a beautiful auto show, dearie. What do you say we walk home, McGee? It's a wonderful night. What do you mean, walk home? Our car's right here in this parking lot. I know, but after seeing all those streamlined automobiles with no running boards and all, I don't think I could stand to ride in it. Oh, no running. That's the trouble with you women, Molly. You're too easily impressed. Things ain't better just because they're different, you know. All right, McGee, but you're going to have a terrible time talking me into being happy with our old puddle jumper. Nah, you... You wait, Molly. Give me a couple of hours with that car, and I'll dilly it up just as fancy as any of these new fans. Oh, there. Good evening, Trout Face. <laughs> and good evening to you, my dear. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Boomer? Hi, Boomer. What you want? Saw your car in the parking lot here and thought you might give me a lift home. Why, certainly, Mr. Boomer. Where are you living now? Well, as a matter of fact, my dear, if you have a lap robe, I'm living in the back of your car. <laughs> Of course, I'll have to make other arrangements first thing in the morning. Now, wait a minute, Boomer. I don't mind giving you a lift, but if you think we're running a rumble seat boarding house, you're... Calm yourself, shortbread. Calm yourself. I'll be glad to explain. You don't have to explain. You got thrown out of your hotel again, didn't you? How dare you? Of course I did. (laughs) Now, stop arguing, McGee. We can give Mr. Boomer a lift. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. And as a slight return for your kindness, I want you to accept this lovely silver trinket. Oh, Mr. Boomer, you don't have to do that now. <laughs> well, let's see it, Boomer. Certainly, certainly. I have it right here somewhere. Now, oh, where did I put that trinket? Trinket, trinket, trinket. Well, I know what happens here, Molly. So while Boomer's discovering that he ain't got a trinket, I'll have the boy bring our car out. <laughs> hey, bud, it's the black one in the second row. The one with the adhesive tape on the windshield. <laughs> Suspicious little tadpole, isn't he? Yes, indeed. Now, let me see. Where did I put that trinket? Oh, never mind it, Mr. Boomer. I don't... Oh, I insist, my dear. I insist. I have it right here somewhere. Trinket, trinket, trinket. Here's a racing form sent to me by the bookie of the month club. <laughs> a dozen photographs of bank presidents... Had them hanging in my room all summer. Made a very effective cooling system. (laughs) Set of false teeth I'm pawning for a destitute friend. Poor fellow. Ah, well, beggars can't be chewers. (laughs) Ah, letter from an old girlfriend. Illiterate little baggage. Refers to me as a friend in human form. And can't even spell friend. (laughs) Ah, yes, and here's a life mask of my brother Edwin. (laughs) Hideous little fellow, isn't he? (laughs) And a check for a short beer. Well, well, imagine that. No trinket. Wonder what I could have done. Dear, oh, dear. Heavenly days. Look what that parking lot attendant did to our car. Come on, Mr. Boomer. Gee, I'm sorry, Mr. McGee. I thought I had plenty of room to get through here. Oh, why, shucks, bud, that's all right. In fact, that's wonderful. Here, shake hands. Huh? Here's a quarter for parking the car and five dollars for yourself. <laughs> McGee, what on earth is the matter with you? Huh? Are you paying a man five dollars for wrecking your car? You stay out of this, Boomer. <laughs> hey, Molly, I told you I'd bring this car up to date. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> why, look, no running boards. <laughs> Fibber and Molly will be back in just a moment. Remember the old proverb, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? A very old proverb, but it's very wise. And it has a direct application at this time of year to your floors. In fact, I might restate this proverb as follows. A coat of wax will give your floors protection against the dirt and slush of winter weather. There's no time when your hardwood floors need the protection of Johnson's Wax more than during the days of rain and snow. When floors are wax-protected, dirt and dampness are quickly wiped up, leaving the floors beautiful and completely untouched. And, of course, the time to Johnson Wax those floors is right now. Genuine Johnson's Wax does require polishing, but once on, it lasts a very long time, and it not only saves you work throughout the year, but gives you more beautiful floors than you can obtain in any other way. You may buy Johnson's Wax in either the paste or liquid form. Notice on the package the 100 extra uses for this famous wax polish. 
It will pay you to try these extra uses for Johnson's Wax in your home. again next week, folks, for the further adventures of Fibber McGee and Molly, that tender and gripping story of two people who side by side are struggling bravely against the forces of social unrest. What is the secret of Horatio K. Boomer's perpetual inventory of nefarious souvenirs? What sinister motives lie beneath the smooth Johnson waxed surface of Harlow Wilcox? What dark tragedy has brought Mrs. Uppington, the blue-blooded soda jerk, to the verge of social ostracism? Is it entirely coincidence that little I betcha seems to deliberately exasperate our hero? Will the old-timer ever hear a story the same way McGee heard it? Why does Gildersleeve... Ah, but wait. Wouldn't you like to know the answers to these and many other fascinating questions which for five years have kept America's radio public looking over its shoulder on dark nights? Wouldn't you, though? And wouldn't we? I'll say so. Good night. (laughs) Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night at this same time. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.